One of my only disappointments with Eugen's Steel Division Normandy 44 was the lack of any love for my beloved Eastern Front of World War II. Steel Division 2 corrects this, adding tons of new, historically grounded units and divisions, from the iconic T-34 tank to the lesser-known woman-led Soviet sniper teams. It does almost everything Normandy 44 did as well or better, but just about everything new it tries gets bogged down in the mud. If you played the original, Steel Division 2's multiplayer and skirmish versus AI modes are going to seem very familiar. You select one of 28 thoroughly researched historical divisions from either the Allied or Axis side to serve as the base deck for your forces. There's a lot of fun tweaking to do here, as you have to consider trade-offs like having fewer, more hardened troops with higher stats but also higher costs, or a larger number of weak and cheap rookies. And Steel Division's three-phase battle system makes a return, adding an extra wrinkle of having to think about which units are going to become available in the early, middle, and late parts of the battle. Not all of the units are impressive to look at, though, especially when it comes to the infantry. You won't be zooming down this close very often, but still, these NKVD officers look like action figures that got left out on a hot day for too long. The available divisions include some very interesting new possibilities that open up tactics you wouldn't see in Normandy 44. The late war on the Eastern Front saw two juggernauts that had been bashing heads for years having to make do with what was left over, leading to some memorable and different formations, like the ragtag and disheveled German Gruppe Hotneck, which takes the normally pressed and prepared Wehrmacht and shows off what they're reduced to after a hard night of trying to invade Russia. The Soviets really steal the show, however. I fell in love with the long-suffering 184-ya Strelkovi, a defensively-minded infantry division that gives a starring role to sharpshooters and offers that dramatic feeling of holding the line against overpowering odds. The 184-ya do particularly well in the new Breakthrough mode, which is the best new feature of Steel Division 2. Rather than having two sides try to fight for control of a neutral battlefield, Breakthrough gives the defenders almost all of the map to deploy on, and challenges the attackers, who start with just a sliver, to break through the enemy lines by any means necessary. Building defense in depth is extremely important on the defensive side, and the way it forced me to think in terms of multiple flexible lines instead of a single rigid one felt refreshing. Attacking on a breakthrough map is tense and can alternate between euphoric and frustrating based on how well your advance is proceeding. Unfortunately, Steel Division 2's biggest new feature is kind of a flop. The Army General mode tries to add a strategic campaign layer on top of the tactical battles, and it has some good ideas. Units move across the turn-based strategic map with realistic speeds depending on terrain, roads, and whether they're made up mostly of guys, tanks, or trucks. When meeting the enemy, the phase each unit deploys in is based on how far they are from the initial point of engagement. This sounds cool in theory, but it led to some vexing situations, like going up against an enemy armored emplacement with artillery support while I was using only recon units and having to wait an excruciatingly long time for my armored support to show up, at which point the battle was pretty much lost already. The amount of fiddly campaign movement needed to alleviate this makes the whole thing feel like herding cats. To frustrate me further, I ran into a couple instances where the end turn button would lock up and stop my progress entirely, and the whole thing is also very poorly explained. There is no tutorial, but rather an in-game manual that I was never told about, so I eventually found it by accident after several turns of flailing around trying to figure out how anything works. It's text-heavy, with only static images and charts as examples. Oh, and there's not even a tutorial for the actual tactical battles anywhere. Normandy 44 had a very good one, but those who are picking up the sequel as their first Steel Division game are going to be very confused, and for such a complex game, that is not a small problem. Steel Division 2 continues the series tradition of tactically deep, enjoyable, historically grounded World War II real-time combat. The new Eastern Front divisions bring plenty to the table to reinvigorate the multiplayer and skirmish modes. The combat mechanics themselves haven't evolved all that much, but they work well enough without trying to reinvent the wheel. 
just stay away from the Army General campaign, and if you didn't play Normandy 44, you'll probably need to give it a spin first, as it does a great job of explaining a lot of things that Steel Division 2 won't even bother to try. For more historically inspired combat, check out our reviews of Red Dead Online, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, and Mordhau. And for everything else, stick with IGN.